so today was one of the most frightening days ever. Um, when I first decided to start doing this vlog, I told myself that I wanted to be able to document everything about this journey and this process, both the good and the bad. So today's a bit, well, let me just explain. So this morning I got a call from Kate, our surrogate, and um, it's one of those things where she she texts me and says, "Hey guys, uh, I, could you please call me as soon as you can?" And she's done that a few times in the past, and every single time she does that, my heart just drops because I immediately think worst like I immediately think about the worst case scenario oh my gosh what does she mean by call me immediately she's done this like four times in the past and I would say like three out of the four times um, it ended up not being like anywhere near what I was probably fearing at the same time um, but today I, I saw the message and of course my heart sank and dropped and I was like, oh gosh, catastrophic thinking, what could it be? So I called her and she told me that she was at the hospital because that morning she, she had um, a dream that night, last night, that she was having cramps. And then that morning she woke up and she was bleeding. And I think it was spotting at first, but it ended up being more than spotting. Um, spotting or, you know, bleeding um, is normal um, during pregnancy. It doesn't normally, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's anything bad happening or a major complication. Um, it is it is fairly common and it does happen to a lot of pregnant women. Um, spotting with cramping is a bad sign. Um, and spotting that's more than spotting. I think I'm not really sure what the definition is of how much you need to be bleeding for it to not be considered spotting in, anymore. Um, but it, it seemed like she was bleeding more than just spotting. And that can also be a bad sign. So she dreamt that she was cramping but while she was awake she wasn't cramping so that was at least a bit of a sigh of relief but of course you know I'm thinking oh my gosh like what's what's happening so um, she said that they she was at the hospital and they were gonna do a sonogram just to check out what's going on just to see what's happening. It was too early to tell really anything. But the fact again that she wasn't cramping, at least that at that moment she wasn't cramping, was a good sign. So we're holding on to hope as much as possible. And so of course I was at work and it's true what they say. When you get news like that, time stops. Time just comes to a complete stop. And it's like, I was there at work, but I wasn't there. You know, I was kind of going with emotions. People were like talking at me and I was responding back to them, hopefully in a very, hopefully in a semi-coherent way, but I wasn't completely there. It was a very cathartic situation because everything is going through my head. You probably can imagine what's going through my head right now. Um, but I was trying to like hold on to hope and praying and because by this point we were in our 16th week um, going into our 17th week the next day. So well into the second trimester. And when you're in the second trimester, the chances of a miscarriage dramatically drop to, I believe, less than 1%. You know, it's not completely off the table, but it is, chances are very slim. 
So we were just hoping it was something else. I know that one common source after doing a bit of Googling, because that's what you do during these situations, for better or for worse, sometimes it makes you feel better, sometimes it makes you panic more because you find things when you Google about medical stuff. I knew that, but I couldn't help it. Um, there are some things that can cause um, bleeding during a pregnancy that has nothing to do with a miscarriage, and a lot of it has to do with the placenta and where the placenta attaches to the uterine wall. If the placenta attaches close to the cervix, that can cause the bleeding. But normally that happens around or after week 20. So we were still like about to reach week 17. So it seemed a little bit odd that that was the cause of the bleeding. So if that wasn't the cause of the bleeding, then what is the cause of the bleeding, obviously? Um, before she went in for her sonogram, they were able to check the baby's heartbeat. Thank God we're able to find out that the baby's heartbeat was a very strong 160 beats per minute, which is really, really a really good sign. Um, so, so far, it seemed like the baby was okay. But again, like, we didn't, I didn't want to like, I wasn't holding my breath um, because I wanted to wait and see what the sonogram results told. And they needed to specifically look at not only the baby, but also check for the placenta and how the placenta is attached to the uterine wall, like I said, and the ovaries and the cervix to see if they can get a little bit more information. So it was a little bit more waiting then. And you know, I had meetings back to back and um, it was just a really tough day. I, I feel like though that my job would have understood if I decided to take the rest of the day off, but I just pushed through it. I needed, I needed a distraction. I needed to at least go through some normalcy for the day, at least just to try to push through it. I even had to give a presentation during one of my meetings today and that was that was kind of tough because during that presentation was when Kate was having her sonogram and I knew that at any moment that phone was going to ring and I would have to like pick it up probably in the middle of my presentation but again I informed my coworkers about it ahead of time they knew what was happening totally understood so that wasn't going to be an issue but you know it was just another thing I had to deal with so the, wor the worst case scenario Kate told me that would happen at this point is that um, the doctors may tell her that uh, she would have to stay uh, on bed rest for the duration of the rest of the pregnancy, which doesn't sound particularly fun being chained to a bed for five months because Kate herself is a very active person. Hopefully, though, this is something that she can just bounce back from and everything just goes back to normal and we continue as if none of this ever happened. So that would be wonderful if that's the case. Finally, I got a call back from, um, from Kate and she was able to provide us with like videos of the sonogram, which was really nice of her. And she was able to tell us that the baby is doing great. The baby seems to be healthy and normal the placenta seems to be fine and normal, so it has nothing to do with the placenta. Um, so between that, it pretty much, for the time being, for the time being, it feel it seemed that the worst case scenario of a miscarriage was off the table. Thank the Lord. Like I took a huge sigh of relief. And um, so basically, that meant that, Whatever was happening was not coming from the baby. But it did mean that it was coming from Kate herself. So of course, we're all wondering, well, what's going on with Kate's body? And as of right now, um, there isn't a definitive answer yet. There isn't a definitive reason behind why the bleeding is happening. So the doctor's best explanation currently is that... Um, during pregnancy, the cervix can get very sensitive, and due to that sensitivity, bleeding may happen. 
So that's what their thinking is going on right now. So they basically um, released Kate from the hospital and sent her back home and told her to take it easy for the next couple of days. And after the second day, she would return back for a follow-up just to check up on things and make sure things were still normal and that the bleeding had stopped. If things continued to get worse, then of course she would have to come back sooner than that. So um, I am happy to say that that um, as of right now, it's late tonight since it happened this morning, Kate um, says that um, the bleeding has dramatically decreased and hopefully, hopefully whatever this thing is, it's correcting itself and it's just going to pass. So crisis averted. The, ir- the irony is, and I was talking to this with Colin's sister, the irony is after I was given the news that everything was fine, I mean, for the most part, everything was fine, it felt, that was when I felt even more <laughs> anxious and even more frightened because this sort of gives you like a quick like reality check that, you know, anything, anything can happen at any point. And it's hard because there was at the very beginning, like I was very anxious and I was telling myself, I can't get like myself. I can't let myself get too excited because it's too early. And I, we don't want to counter chickens before it's, we, it hatches because that's just setting yourself up for disappointment. And then as the weeks progressed, and especially by the time we reached the second trimester, which is when most people do start telling their friends and family, because that is the quote unquote past the danger zone, or at least the main danger zone, I was allowing myself to relax a little bit and let myself be excited about this. But then this happens, and then it's just like, boom, reality check, anything can happen at any point, and you never know. So, and the thing is, I know that I can't live my life that way. I can't live my life every single day feeling oh god like is something what's gonna happen today is kate gonna send me that hey guys call me as soon as you can text message that dreaded text message um yeah and and it's yeah i don't i i i don't know i i am so grateful and i and so appreciative for kate and i told her this myself personally i'm so grateful to her because really of her transparency because the three of us we really are we see each other as a team and the fact that it must have been so hard putting myself in her position because i know how much pressure she must be feeling i know how much she knows how important this is not only to myself or to Colin, but to our whole family. Um, I know she wants this so badly for us, and I know that she wants so much for this to be a reality for us that I just cannot imagine the pressure that's that she feels, even when things like this don't happen, even on a normal day. I'm sure there's a lot of pressure. And her, you know, experiencing this scary thing and telling us feeling that you know she could have just waited till later like later in the day after she went through the hospital and waited till there was more details waited till she got more information before finally informing us but no she felt deep in her heart that she needed to let us know everything that happens as it happened you know not hiding anything from us just telling us straight up this is what's happening this is what we know and this is what we don't know and this is because nobody especially in that position wants to be the bearer of bad news or scary news and if me me being in that position i know i would be absolutely terrified and it would take so much courage and bravery for me to contact the intended parents and tell them what's going on even though i know that's the right thing even i know that is important um so once again i just have to say just give a deep deep test uh, like 
a deep testament to Kate and for everything that she's been doing so far and how wonderful she's been about being so transparent to us and being so upfront to us and not, it just shows how much we trust her implicitly, implicitly, because it's very important for you to have this trust, um, this team that we have, that, you know, we are in this together throughout the good and the bad. And, you know, I keep telling myself that this is probably not going to be the last time I'm going to be panicking madly over my kid. And the, ir the irony is that gives me comfort that this isn't the last time. It gives me comfort that this is not going to be the last time that I'm going to be panicking over my child. So, yeah. Um, again, we'll probably find out more information, maybe, hopefully, about why what happened was happening in two days or it would just go away and we're just like it, it happened and it was a thing and it whatever it was wasn't that big of a deal so don't worry about it i don't know <laughs> hopefully that's that's what'll end up happening but um anyway i thank you guys for listening and thank you guys so much for your continual support your continual prayers or positive energy or good vibes or good feels or whatever applies to you thank you so much for sending any of the above our way throughout this process we're still again not um out of the woods yet um but the fact that we are about to go into week 17 is a very good sign um i'm still gonna have my guard up my emotional guard up right now because we're still i'm still like recovering you know i'm still catching my breath and just trying to decompress and trying to get myself back into some feeling of normalcy because I'm still in a semi cathartic state recovering from a very frightening experience and having all these thoughts into my head about what would have what would I be going through right now if the news were different I don't even want to think about that right now like what I would be thinking doing wondering right this moment if the news were totally different i don't want to think about that right now and i shouldn't because that's just going to drive me crazy and drive me nuts but um you know it's it's the next few days is just going to be really tough because i looked at the day before today you know i was thinking man it's almost 17 weeks and the 17 weeks has gone by relatively quickly you know fairly quickly um it just feels like yesterday we got confirmation of pregnancy but now that this happened i feel like the next week is gonna be much 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 slower and things are gonna be a little bit of a drawl as we're still like recovering from from this and you know just wondering what's happening today is anything eventful gonna happen today yes no hopefully not no news is good news and the day after that and the day after that and hopefully like this is going to be it for a very long time and um then we'll get back to the point where the weeks are going to flow a lot faster again and then before you know it like it'll be time for a very hopefully knock on wood healthy birth um but in the meantime i'm just trying to take it one day at a time so um for any of you guys who've experienced something like this and God forbid if it if you experienced something like this and got worse news than we got, um, I feel for you. I really do. I feel for you. Right now, I, I feel like I dodged a bullet at the moment. And um, yeah, I, I just feel very lucky and very blessed that things worked out they, they did today. Who knows what tomorrow brings or next week or next month brings i don't know i just want to at least feel good about today and what's happening today um kate has a great support system right now we have a very good support system right now and we're just continuing to hope and pray that um this journey will continue at as as a steady pace 
with no other shocking surprises as much as possible. So thank you guys so much for listening. And until next time, love yourselves and love each other.